In this video, I'm gonna share with you a couple of techniques for adding shadows to your UI views in Android. Coming right up. Hey everybody, welcome back, this is Alex. If this is your first time here, consider subscribing to the channel. We do native script tips, tricks and tutorials here. And hit the little notification bell so you don't miss any of those that are coming up. Now we're doing the Android shadow tutorial here today. I've already done the iOS shadow tutorial, pretty detailed tutorials about iOS shadows. Check it out in the library here in this channel. You might need to scroll back to a couple months ago. And you're gonna wanna watch that because I've got a couple of other videos coming up on comparing iOS and Android shadows and how to make them look the same and the settings that you're gonna need to be able to have them look the same or similar at least, we're gonna try to match them up. And also we're gonna do some animations of shadows. That's coming up in the next few weeks. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss those. And also I'm gonna show you how to create directives in Angular and in Vue for adding shadows to your views really simply in a reusable way. Speaking of NativeScript Vue, I'm still here in the studio where I'm shooting the introduction videos and some other videos for the new NativeScript Vue Pro course. We got a group of beta testers for that course that are contributing ideas. It's been really awesome working with those guys and uh, I'm getting some really good ideas about what to do with exercises for that course and what content to include. It's gonna be the best course we've done so far on native scripting. So I'm really excited about that. And I'm gonna keep updating you on what's going on with that course and how it's progressing. Right now that course is on pre-sale. It's available to buy right now. You can get the whole View Master Bundle, which is gonna give you a whole bunch of courses at a discounted price. And keep an eye out on nativescripting.com on the View Pro course page for dates of when each chapter is going to be released. All right, so today we're doing Android Shadows. And I gotta say that in Android, it's a lot different than in iOS. Specifically the way text is treated and the way other views are treated. And I'm gonna show you two different techniques for applying shadows in Android views. One is related to text and one is related to other objects like images, content view, or layouts. And we'll take a look at the difference and the different effect that you're gonna get with those. Let's do that now. All right, we're gonna kick this off with the Hello World template as we usually do. Here it is on Android this time. And if I tap this button, you'll see the counter decrement. I've already cleaned this up a little bit and you removed the comments. We have a few things to work with here, so we're just gonna use what we have. That's the stack layout, which is an example of a layout, and we'll see how to apply a shadow to that. We'll see an example of applying a shadow to the label, and then a button. And that should give you a good idea of how to apply shadows to these things. Now, each one of these is a view. So a page is a view, an action bar is a view, a stack layout is a view, a label, a button, they're all views. View is just a general class that's the parent of all these classes. So each one of them has a loaded event because view has a loaded event. So I'm gonna hook up the stack layout loaded event and I'm going to call the onloaded handler. This needs to be defined in the code behind file. So we have mainpage.xml, we have mainpage.ts. This is the code behind file. I'm gonna export a function called onloaded, which is gonna get args, the parameter of type event data. Now args.object is the object itself that got loaded. In this case, it's stack layout. So I'm gonna cast that as a view because we know that layouts are views as well. And I'll store this off as my view. Now, here's where the fun part begins. In native script, the view will have an iOS property if you're running on iOS, this will actually have something in it. But if you're running on Android, iOS will be undefined. And likewise, view.android will be undefined if you're running on iOS, and it will be something if you're running on Android. Now, right now we're running on Android, so view.android will not be null. I will not bother checking to see if it's null or not for this example, but if you're running a real world application, you wanna check that. You wanna see if view.android is not null, okay? You wanna see if it's defined. You can do it like this as well. And then execute your Android related logic, but I'm not doing that here for this example. Just keep that in mind. So view.android will give us a different view depending on what view is rendered. So in Android, a label is actually a text view, a button is a button, and a stack layout is something else. I actually don't know what the Android equivalent of a stack layout is, but it'll be the Android equivalent. And that's why we're gonna treat these a little bit differently. 
the easiest thing to do is just call set elevation, but this is not gonna work for every view. So let me show you what that means. Let's say I set elevation to 20 and I'm gonna save this and let's take a look at what we have. You know what, I'm actually going to go ahead and minimize this side and let's minimize the screen so you can always see the emulator here. Now, you can see that nothing happened. The stack layout got loaded, but we don't see any shadows. What if I try moving that loaded event to a label? Let's try that. I'm gonna move it to this label right here and let's save it. Nothing happens either. Let's go ahead and undo that. And the reason for that is the label and the stack layout, they don't have a background color. You need to set the Android background color if the elevation is gonna work to show the shadow. So what I wanna do is check the native script view and get the background color property of that because I don't wanna change the background color. Now this background color is the native script color type. So I'm gonna cast it as color and I need to import color. All right, that's coming from page, has a color exposed, that's fine. And we wanna get the Android color. So this is gonna give us the native script color. And again, this will have the iOS property on it if it's on iOS, and it'll also have the Android equivalent. So this will give us the Android color. Okay, but that might be null because if a view doesn't have the background color set, then it's going to be null. So what I'm going to do is create another constant called final color, and we're gonna check Android color. And if that's available, we're gonna keep Android color. Otherwise, we're just gonna create a new color and we're gonna say white dot Android. Ah, okay, I got an exception because here is an example of that. I called dot Android on a background color that doesn't actually exist. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and change this a little bit. I'm just gonna call this view color and we're gonna get that background color, cast it as color, and then final color will be if view color exists, then we're gonna get view color dot Android Otherwise, we're gonna get new white color dot Android. Okay, so that works. Now we need to apply that background color to the current view. View dot Android dot set background drawable. And here we're gonna create a new Android dot graphics dot drawable. Now you notice that I'm not getting IntelliSense. In fact, TypeScript is complaining here because it doesn't know what Android dot graphics is. I'm gonna fix that in a second. Drawable dot color drawable. And we're gonna pass in that final color. Oh, I called it final final. It should be final color. All right, final color. You notice that Visual Studio Code accidentally imported. It was trying to be helpful, but it accidentally imported this Android from TNS Core Modules application application. That's not what we want. That's the wrong Android. Let's delete that because that's gonna mess up what we're actually trying to get. All right, so now Android is undefined here. Now, the quick way of doing this is just saying declare const Android as any. This will quickly bypass your uh, TypeScript compilation errors. All right, I'm gonna save this, but there's a better way of doing that. And uh, I have a video on how to use NativeScript platform declarations. Check out that video, I'll link to it down below as well. This will allow you to get full IntelliSense on the entire Android namespace. All right, so we've set that final color as our drawable. Now we also have this stack layout here and that's what we're calling unloaded on. Let's try, I'm gonna cut that loaded event and put it on the label instead, right there. So now our label has a shadow, but that's not exactly how you want your label to have a shadow, is it? You want the actual text to have the shadow, not around the label. We'll come back to that in a second. I just wanna show you another thing here. You see how the label only has a shadow on one side? and not all around it. That's because there's no space between the stack layout and the label on the left, on the right, and on the top. So in order to fix that, we're gonna use a margin. And the way you can do that is just say, style equals margin of 20, for example. I can do that. And you can see that now it sets it apart a little bit and now the shadow is all around it. There's other ways of doing it. You can also use one of the predefined classes. For example, here, we're using some of the classes from the theme that's automatically imported. I can just say M20 and that'll give us a margin of 20. All right, so that works as well. Now, let's go back to the stack layout. I'm gonna put the loaded event back on the stack layout and you don't see a shadow there and that's because we don't have a margin again. So where you have the class P20 here, I'm just gonna add M20 to the list of classes there and then you'll see that that stack layout now sits in a little bit and you see a shadow around it. This will work for any layout too. 
So now we can set the elevation to 20, we can set it to 70, which will make it even more of a shadow. So that's pretty cool and that works on labels, but in my opinion, unless the label has a background and a border, it doesn't look that great. I want the actual text to have the shadow and we'll come back to that in a second. It looks good on the wrapping layout elements, which is nice. Let's check it out on the button. So I'm gonna add this loaded event to the button and there we go. Huh, not what I expected. So the button got larger, but there is no elevation as far as I can see unless I tap it. But that was already the default anyway. So it's not working on the button either. Now buttons are a weird one and uh, I'll show you how to treat buttons by using resources. However, buttons do have text inside of them. And if you wanted to add shadow in the text of the button, we're going to do that next. So we're going to handle the label text and the button text next. I'm going to move this loaded event back to the label here and let's go to our code. Each Android view that's text based has another method you can call. I'm going to go ahead and comment out this set elevation. Instead, what we're going to do is say view dot Android dot set shadow layer. And this takes in uh, a few different parameters. I'm just going to put them in right now. Uh, that's going to be the height of the shadow right here, the first parameter, the second and the third parameters are the offset. And then we need to provide a color. So I'm going to use native scripts color and we're going to use black here. And then I want to get the Android property from that. Let's go ahead and run that. And you can see now that my label at the top has a shadow. So if I set this to 70, for example, there we go. That shadow is a lot more spread out. We can also give a different color of shadow. For example, here is red. So now that text has red and this will work on the button as well. So if I move this loaded event to the button, you can see that our tap text now has a little bit of a shadow to it, a red shadow. It might not be so visible in the video, but it does. In your loaded event, you might need to take a look at what you're applying the shadow to and run different logic based on what the type of the view is. So for example, let's see if view dot type name equals label, for example, then you can apply, well, let's move it down here. You can apply this logic to it, the set shadow layer, else just do more checks to see if it's a layout type or if it's a button type and do different shadow applications based on the type of the UI widget you're dealing with. It's a little bit more of a pain than on iOS, but it's possible to do. I'm also going to create a video on how to handle buttons by pulling in different resources. So we're going to use Android resources and we can apply and style buttons, including shadows through resources. We'll do that in the next video. So make sure you subscribe to the channel. All right. So we're going to take the what we learned today and we're going to apply it over the next few videos doing different things. For example, I got a video on matching Android and iOS shadows, how to get those two to look similar and what the different settings are that you can apply on each platform. We're going to look at them side to side and see how we can get those to match. We're also going to do a shadow animation tutorial, which is really cool. And this comes as a result of a request that you guys did on this channel in the comments. So if you have any requests, leave them in the comments below. You can also reach out to me on Twitter. I'm at Digitalix over there. And if you're not subscribed yet, please subscribe to the channel and hit the little notification bell so you don't miss any of the upcoming tutorials. And I'll see you in the next video. Happy native scripting.